Hello, I'm Krupa Party. Thank you for joining us. The British-born singer and actress Jane Birkin has died in her adoptive home, Paris, at the age of 76. She had a prolific career in cinema and became a symbol of 60s fashion style. Overseas, Jane Birkin was probably best known for this song. The 1969 romantic duet Je t'aime moi non plus sung with her lover, the late French singer Serge Gainsbourg. It was recorded months after they met on the set of the film's slogan. In recent years, Jane Birkin maintained her celebrity status after inspiring the Hermes Birkin handbag. Well, when it was released, the song Je t'aime was banned on radio stations in several countries and condemned by the Vatican because of its overtly sexual lyrics. Speaking in a BBC documentary in 2015, Jane Birkin reflected on the controversy. The Vatican and the BBC banned it just because of the heavy breathing without realising the beauty of Serge's text, which was, I love you, nor do I. I played it to my mother and father. I I, I used to do it jumping, the heavy breathing. So Ma said, what a beautiful tune. <laughs> and it was, of course. Then my brother came by the house and put the whole thing on with the breathing. <laughs> so Ma kept to her thing of saying it's a beautiful tune. And my father too, they were stoic. But can you imagine having your daughter in such a scandalous thing where it went up in the charts in England where everybody talked about it? For them, it must have been a nightmare. Well, tributes have been coming in following Jane Birkin's death. The French president, Emmanuel Mac Macron, has tweeted, because she embodied freedom, because she sang the most beautiful words of our language. Jane Birkin was a French icon, a complete artist. Her voice was as sweet as her engagements were fiery. Well, let's pick up on this story and speak to the BBC's Europe regional editor, Paul Moss, who is in the newsroom for us. Thank you for joining us. Um, we, I, I understand uh, that uh, you have seen her in action. I did. I saw one of her last concerts, in fact, last year. Now, full disclosure, I was not a particular Jane Birkin fan, but I think that's why in many ways I was surprised by how blown away I was by that concert. Uh, I happened to be in the town of set in the south of France with a friend. We saw that Jane Birkin was playing. I went to see her and, you know, that word icon is so overused, but you really felt it as she came onto the stage with, I should say, the notes of the song Je t'aime playing, that famous organ line. And you felt this audience rapture, this reaching out to this woman who meant so much to them. This, And she charmed the audience. Uh, this was only a few months after she'd had to cancel some concerts because she'd broken her shoulder. And not that long after she'd had a stroke, she came on stage, she had to support herself by leaning on a lectern, and yet there was this slightly fragile voice, but still singing so beautifully. It was an evening I don't think any of us there will forget. Explain that journey to us then, how someone who is born in the UK crosses into France and breaks into that cultural, that, that rich cultural scene there. I mean, it's extraordinary. I was thinking of the, uh, the quote you just mentioned of Mr. Macron, what he had to say about a British actress and singer saying that she sang the most beautiful words in the French language. That's not something you hear very often. It, it goes back to the 1960s when really continental European culture was in some ways separate to British culture. And then there's this Italian director, Antonioni, who comes to Britain and makes a very continental European film, but set in London. And who stars in it but Jane Birkin, a role that was slightly notorious. She appeared uh, with not too many clothes on in a couple of scenes, but that made her shoot to fame. She goes over to France, and that's where it starts. And she then went on to work with some of the most famous French directors around, Bertrand Tavernier, Jean-Luc Godard, uh, yeah, Alain René as well. I mean, how many people could say they starred in films by those very sort of highbrow uh, film, film directors, but also managed to release a song which was condemned by the Vatican. We're talking about someone really rather remarkable. Such a roller coaster life there, and, and I can't let you go without mentioning her partner, Serge Gainsbourg, because that relationship was significant, wasn't it? Indeed. I mean, tumultuous is the word that's so often used, but I mean, they really did put a spin on it. I, eat your heart out, Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. I would say Serge Gainsbourg and Jane Birkin were on another level. Famously, at one point, though, they had a fight where she put a custard pie in his face and then jumped in the Seine. I mean, there were antics to keep people entertained aplenty. 
But I really think it's important to say that she was so much more than simply the, you know, the wife and then ex-wife of a, a famous French singer. They split in 1980, although they remained friends. But she carried on with some extraordinary solo performances, both in cinema and in music, and then gave her name to the Hermes handbag. I mean, she was a, a fashion icon as well, very much a woman in her own right. And uh, although, yes, Serge Gainsbourg, that partnership, that notorious song, certainly helped to promote her. She was quite a human being in her own right. What an incredibly rich life. Thank you so much, Paul Moss, there for joining us here on BBC News.